In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at back-to-back -back sweeping cold fronts across the central and eastern states set to bring snowfall and severe weather to multiple states. And we're going to be taking a look at the long range pattern in this video. Let's just dive into things and we see cold front number one already on screen this afternoon and evening here impacting Ohio Valley in through the deep south here and even up into the Great Lakes as we have a strong 988 millibar low pressure center over the upper Midwest bringing heavy heavy snowfall up here to south central Canada and the north central United States. Behind it is very severe cold air that is trying to move in. Meanwhile, out ahead of it, we have rising very, very warm air. And this is the perfect setup for thunderstorm development. Let's move towards tomorrow afternoon. And what we see is these thunderstorms move into the eastern states, especially in the southeast here. There's going to be a chance of thunderstorms and even severe weather. But even these heavier showers could feature some thunder as far north as the northeast. A lot of rainfall on the way as we see this front stall out and a low pressure system develop near the coast of North Carolina. This is by tomorrow night on, uh, or better yet, this is on Thursday night on the 28th, which is two days from now. And we see there is still rainfall across the mid-Atlantic with colder air rapidly moving in behind this thing. By the time we reach the morning hour of Friday, this will be all said and done. And we'll be left with pretty cold air across the mid-Atlantic and the northeast as we see this trough develop behind everything. I'm personally waiting for at least after this one to grow my crops if you are growing a garden. Uh, but I'm even watching one in early April uh, where I might even hold off until after Easter. So let's watch this play out. By the time we're reaching the 30th on Saturday, we see another storm system moving in across the southwest, 9898. Offshore of California bringing snowfall to the Sierra Nevada and portions of the Rockies as well as heavy rainfall for those coastal and lower elevation areas of California. We do have a 1,002 millibar low pressure center here over the Midwest and this is bringing some rainfall to Illinois, Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, and in through Pennsylvania. By the time we reach in towards Sunday on Easter, that's going to be March 31st, what we see is there is some rising warm air across the central and eastern states. There is some showers and isolated thunderstorms in this, keep in mind. But overall, with these temperatures, I'm looking forward to a very, very beautiful Easter Sunday there on March 31st. Out west, not so much as we have a heavy snowstorm impacting areas of the west the Rockies, and even the Northern Plains. So going to be very, very messy out there. Here's where we start to talk about more cold, and it's not going to feel that way on Monday, April 1st, as we have this sweeping warm front rising across the eastern states out ahead of this 995 that is over the upper Midwest once again. So again, here's that warm front. Warm air is pushing in behind it, and we expect more mild conditions afterwards. These warm fronts typically don't feature as much severe weather or thunderstorm development. That's not to say that it's impossible, but typically it's the cold fronts where we're watching for that type of activity. So I'm mostly expecting showers and just steady rainfall as opposed to thunderstorm development along this line. It's really underneath where we're going to want to watch for a cold front to develop underneath this low. So let's see if that ends up happening. Well, real quick, I guess we should mention that there is a lot of heavy snowfall in the upper Midwest and the northern plains here for states like Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, and in through Minnesota. Now let's go ahead and watch for that cold front to develop, and it does happen overnight Monday into Tuesday. We see it's a 996 over Michigan at this point. Cold front sweeping all the way down through Texas, so we're seeing states like Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana being impacted by this cold front boundary. By the time we reach the afternoon hour of Tuesday, uh, we see this very, very powerful cold front stretching across still the south central states, some of the Ohio Valley in here, and even some of the mid-Atlantic and the northeast. This thing is just going to continue to move in, and by the time we're taking a look at Wednesday on the 3rd, what we see is a 998 over New York City. Um, and we see a sweeping cold front underneath this with very mild air out ahead of it. So I do anticipate the chance of thunderstorms and severe weather in this corridor 
for the start of next week. And again, that's going to extend from Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, up through South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, and D.C. there, Pennsylvania, the Delmarva, New Jersey, and potentially even portions of lower New York State. That's all of the areas impacted by the cold front underneath the low that is right here. Expect mostly rainfall and snowfall respectively to the north of it depending on your elevation. It is also worth noting, look at how intense this cold air is behind this cold front and this is what we can anticipate behind it. Uh, once this has moved through very very mild air is rushing to the north out west which is helping to aid the sinking of this cold air and this is why we have such severe cold air far south in the east like that uh, by thursday we feel this cold air along the east again this is that date that i'm watching for to potentially wait until after this to plant my plants outdoors um, so keep that in mind that I am watching this right now. I've never really talked about gardening or farming or anything like that, but I'm getting into it this year. So I figure since I'm thinking about it, there might be some of you that are finding that information useful. Let me know in the comments if it's just annoying when I talk about it, or if you guys do find that useful, that would be helpful insight for sure. I can tell you that it does look like after this point, we do expect mild air as of now. This is 10 days out, so things can change, but it does appear like we're going to see a sudden rush of warmth after this cooldown. So by the fifth, sixth, seventh time frame, we should be back in the warm direction here, looking much more spring-like. And, you know, every single day as we head into the midpoint of spring here, the the kind of climate is warming, obviously. So we do anticipate that these cooldowns are going to become less and less frequent until we reach the warm times of the year here. So likely this kind of third, fourth Arctic quick blast should be the last one. Although we don't have model guidance or at least reliable model guidance beyond this point, so it's impossible to say, but I will be tracking this with you guys over time. Now the GFS model does go out to 15 days, but again, I didn't say that there isn't models that go beyond that point, just not really reliable. So I'm not paying too much mind to it. We get that first cold front and coastal low there uh, here coming up in just a couple of days with some colder air. We get this second low with that cold front looks almost identical. A little less cold air there for the third and fourth, but still relatively cold. I'd say the most interesting thing here is we do get a northeast snowstorm here on the GFS model. A 986 over portions of Canada. Coastal low out here and there's just enough cold air to produce snowfall in Pennsylvania, New York, and northern New England. We'll be watching that. I, I don't know how likely this is. I think maybe more of a mountain snowfall event would be a little bit more likely as opposed to this kind of widespread event. Uh, but time will tell for sure with that one. We do see that come to an end. Sudden warmth rush there, just like we saw in the European model. We do get some storms moving across the nation due to this. Um, we actually get a 997 here over the Ohio Valley, and we would be watching for thunderstorm and severe weather development underneath it there. It has a very northern-based warm front, so I'm expecting warm air to be rushing up the east coast, even up into Canada here, and cold air is sinking down. This would actually be a pretty violent setup for potential thunderstorms. Uh, but again, this is beyond 10 days, so take it as as it is, which is very, very long range. And you should be a little bit skeptical of it. Things quiet down afterwards. We see a little bit of a cool down with warmer air on the way. So nothing big changing in the long range as far as what we're anticipating with the overall temperature pattern. I expect this kind of progressive pattern to continue where we see these warm ups and then the sudden cold front sweeping through and then it warming up over a few days and then another cold front. That seems to continue through the midpoint of April. Total precipitation through the next 10 days. West coast through the Rockies experiencing a lot here and then the upper Midwest and deep south through the eastern states here also expecting above average amounts. So yes, most of the country expecting above average precipitation. Total snowfall here on the European model, we're seeing a lot for the West, obviously, a lot for the upper Midwest here, and then a little bit here for the interior and mountainous Northeast. So keep that in mind. I find this to be very realistic, whereas this GFS model, uh, same thing out West, a little bit less for the upper Midwest, but for the East, we see a lot more widespread snowfall. And for the month of April, this just seems to be very, very odd. And I definitely would tell you to take this with a grain of salt or, or maybe even treat this as, as something that is unlikely to happen. 
Um, but certainly, again, I always say if a model is showing it, it is possible and anything really is possible in weather. But this just seems outlandish and it's coming from a model which tends to show outlandish things in the long range. So multiple reasons to feel a little bit hesitant to just believe this. Um, I think that we can maybe expect more like this as far as snowfall would be more realistic, uh, but also some pretty brutal cold. And I'm saying that in terms of the time of year. So for late March into early April, this cold will be relatively brutal. Um, and I'm watching that for gardening, like I said. Obviously, I'm not saying it's brutal in terms of what we would expect in January because we're not expecting anything close to what would be brutal in January. So keep that in mind. Now, we upload every single day, so be sure to subscribe. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.